stirring the coffee with chopsticks using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started. But first, coffee. Nice. I mixed Ethiopian and Guatemalan today. Earthy and floral. It just occurred to me that when I describe coffee, I sound like Patrick Bateman describing a business card. Some of you will get that little chilly today. Took the early morning walk. I do two miles. It's not a lot, but it's not insignificant either. It's enough to get the blood flowing. I feel much more alert by the time I hit the daybreak set here in the cozy nook. Well, I recently said that I'm open to marriage again after 17 years of being single. And I'm blogging about it at the community section on the YouTube page, homepage. Many Red Pill followers completely spurred out and unfollowed by. Many gave me their blessing, not that I'm looking for it. And many are now deciding the same thing about their lives based upon my sane, clear, and reasonable handling of the topic. Rather than a reactionary, injured, person, they are acting sane, with sanity, clarity, and reason, which is the way that I implore you to act and respond to all topics. Cynicism is not a great place to be. It's not a good place to stay. Cynicism comes from injury. Anger comes from injury. When I see an angry guy, I see an injured guy. When I see a cynical guy, I see an injured guy. And what blows me away about YouTube is there's a lot of injured guys teaching injured guys how to not be injured. It's impossible. Can't do it. It's the blind leading the blind. Choose your YouTube channels wisely. What martial arts teacher takes joy in his students going out and beating people up and using the truths that he taught them in the dojo to actually hurt people? That's the difference between the popular red pill teachers and what I call the responsible red pill teachers who are known for taking the adult pill. I'm happy I have a group of faithful, loyal followers who use their own head. It's a wonderful thing. Until you meet people in person, exchange texts personally, speak personally, socialize, break bread with them, clink wine glasses, have coffee with them, then you have no idea what they're about. I say, take the adult pill, meet them in person, and most likely you're going to make a friend. That's how life works. I just got back from a conference with people that I've only known online. Think about it. There are people who you have watched for years. Can you imagine sitting down and having breakfast with them? Can you imagine having coffee with me? Well, that won't be happening again until next October at the next very large conference that I'll be speaking at in the United States. Probably will be speaking in Europe next summer, most likely in Poland. But the big conference will be, the USA conference will be in Orlando a year from now. But there were guys that I've gotten to know over the years only on YouTube who I was hanging out with and getting to know personally and many followers as well. So I was having coffee with you. And it was fun. It was cool to get to know you. And for those who brought their wives along, it was nice to get to know your wife as well and meet your family. Thank you. The pleasure was mine meeting you and your family. I showed a picture of what some people think is the life and another picture of what really is the life and that divided a lot of people.
Some people said, can you have both? Maybe, if you're a man, not if you're a woman. It's tough being a party girl and then all of a sudden deciding to be a mama and a wife, or a wife and a mama, hopefully in that order. I posted a picture and one of the followers says, I found a good woman. I thought partying was the life too. Now we have two boys, five and three years old, and one on the way, and life has never been better. Fellas, don't fall for the garbage that pop culture parades on the TV. In fact, get rid of the TV. Hmm, sounds like me. Learn a trade, work with your hands, get dirty, learn a martial art, grow and hunt your food, start a family, you'll never look back. Thank you, sir, for that comment. That was wonderful. That's appreciated. Men, you know why women leave you? They leave you because you act like a woman. They want polarity. You relinquish strength, you give up your strength because you think it makes them like you more. So you act more feminine in order to try to please a woman. Eventually, they think you're no different than their girlfriend. There's zero polarity. Some of you guys work so damn hard at erasing polarity. It works with guys. Commonness works with guys. Men, listen to me. Commonness works with guys. Oh, you have a wood stove too? What kind? Where do you get your wood from? Where is it? How hot do you keep your house at, at the winter time? Do you buy your wood? Do you chop your wood? Do you have a chainsaw? Men look for things in common. When it's a female, keep that polarity. She doesn't want to talk about wood with you and wood stoves and heating the home. That's actually a good thing. That's a good sign. But when you act like you are interested in the feminine things and want to talk with her about feminine things and girl things, it's cool. It's girlfriendish. But it doesn't work as a long-term strategy or lifestyle. And I watch you on Instagram and all other forms of social media. Many, many of you guys. I, I've lost track. And I see you going through breakups every two to three years and going through the cycle. And then I suggest something and you don't listen to me. Because I'm misogynistic. Or it's a little too rough. Hmm. Gentlemen, for those of you that think I've gone a little too harsh, there's some who think I've gone light. There's some who think I've gone harsh. You will constantly go through the cycle of getting your heart broken unless you listen to me. Maybe in two to three years you'll learn. Because this cycle, you completely lost. You did not win. You lost again. Now you're open to meeting another woman. And guess what? You're going to be like a woman again, talking about things that she wants to talk about. I tell the ladies all the time, amp up your femininity. Do not. Do not be a strong, independent woman. Be an interdependent woman. It's like Jen Molesky said, a woman goes on a date, spends three hours telling a guy, I think it was Jen, telling the guy how much of a strong, independent woman she is and that at the end of the date, she wonders why he wants to go Dutch. Women leave you because you act like a woman. You give up your strength and you think it makes them like you more. It's exactly the opposite. You're going to keep getting your heart broken every two to three years. How do I know? Because you advertise your heartbreak like a trophy. You wear it on your sleeve. I watch your social media. I see your ups and downs and I have been for many years. It's time to make a change. Here are some tips for women to be better in 2020 and 2021. You have three months to go before the end of the year, ladies. Here are some tips. Number one, show less flesh when out and about. That zipper can be here or it can be here. Modesty, think about this. Modesty is your gift to me. Privacy is your gift to yourself. When you get undressed, you close the door you close curtains and shades, don't you? Why? Because you want privacy. But when you go out, you let it all out. Have the same attitude 
when you dress as when you get undressed. Privacy is your gift to yourself. Modesty is your gift to me. As much as I love a female form, I only want to be looking at one female form, and that will be my wife. Until then, I'm not necessarily interested in going in this direction and that direction every time I see a female form. You're not helping men out, even though men are 100% responsible for their own actions, behavior, and thoughts. Show less flesh. Number two, lose weight. Every human being I know needs to lose weight. There might be 0.01% that don't. But ladies, you will always benefit from losing weight. Always. And that doesn't mean starving yourself, having more salads. That means exercising a little bit more, walking. Forget the gym. Walk. That's natural. Gym is not sustainable. Walking is. Walk more. Have less processed foods. And eliminate sugar. Two. That was two. Three is amp up your femininity. Don't be a strong independent woman. Be a strong interdependent woman. If you're a single woman. That's super important. Is to show how you compliment a man. Your life doesn't have to revolve around a man. Unless you are married to him, then your life revolves around your family and raising children. But don't give up your career. For a loser... But don't give up a good man for a loser of a career, either. So what is important to you? It's better to have children while you're younger and raise them, rather than have your career and have it all. It's not going to happen. And then you rush to have children in your 30s and 40s. How many times have we seen that? Amp up your femininity. Don't do things to make yourself look less feminine in the way that you walk, the way that you sit, the way that you carry yourself, and the way that you wear your hair, the length of your hair. Number four, stop saying you're a strong, independent woman. Seek interdependence. That speaks for itself. Number five, stop saying you don't need a man. You do need a man. Lady, you do need a man. And he desires you. Don't you want to be desired? But you need a man to work off of. You need that polarity in your life. Nine times out of ten, your girls' night out has nothing to do with the girls. You know that. You dress differently on girls' night out. If you go out. You need a man. You want to be a strong, independent woman? Then you'll get a man who keeps you at an arm's length. Always. And then you go on your third marriage. I've seen that. Listen, at 60 years old, this is not ideals. This is, I have lived this, I've observed this. I've watched women sink and become absolutely undesirable as a whole in the United States. Women have become undesirable. And then no wonder men only want to use you and then throw you away. You have nothing permanent to offer. I'm helping you here. Number six, look like a wife, not a girl playing the field. You dress conservative during the day, or acceptable during the day, but short skirts at night with cleavage. Some of you women who are blessed with a larger bosom, you feel the need to show it. It's got to be everywhere with the sheer stuff. Men's eyes always going to your cleavage. Clothes just tight enough to imagine what you look like naked. That's for your husband or husband-to-be, not for the rest of the world. Number seven, dating sites. Probably not a good thing. Some people have met their mates on dating sites. I believe the psychology behind dating sites is questionable. I'd rather see you doing things and then meeting somebody in the process of doing things. A singles club, a singles meetup of some type, a common, a common interest group, a chess group, a hiking group, hobby group, art group, 
that kind of thing. Eight, quit alcohol and drug use. Alcohol makes you ugly. I'm not talking about having a glass of wine with dinner. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about drinking. Drinking. And getting high. Quit that. Quit it. It's not good for you as a woman. And it's not attractive. You can be more attractive and attract higher quality men in your life by doing these things that I just talked about. And none of these are misogynistic or from another era. You want to keep getting what you're getting? Keep doing what you're doing. You want to try something different? You're never going to be a born-again virgin. That's not going to happen. It ain't going to happen. But you know what? Well, I heard someone say, uh, the only woman without a past is Eve. It's true. But the more past that you have generated, the less desirable you are. What do you do if you've had a full past with men? You have a hard day of reckoning. A very hard day of reckoning. I mean, I've known playboy centerfold type women, porn women, who've become conservative wives, mothers. That's a tough one for the husband, I think, because he's got to really put that stuff out of his head. The average woman and her number of boyfriends that have spilled their seed in her, on her, and down her throat, that bothers the average man. A woman being with 20 men is different than a man being with 20 women. It's different. Men and women are different. Stop the equality stuff. Stop it. You're not equal. You complement each other. There's high-tier women, high-tier men. Hopefully somewhere in the middle they meet. That's what I want you to be. It's a high-quality woman. And it could start as soon as now. A decision that you make. You're not going to make up for years past. You're not going to make up for the mileage that's already on the odometer. It's not going to happen. But, but it's never too late to restore your life. Restoration is possible. How bad do you want it? Do you want to keep going back? Do you want to go for husband number two? Number three? Number four? Hell, you have husbands the way most young girls have boyfriends. You collect engagement rings and last names in half of a house at a time. And every time you leave a marriage, you leave with a little bit more. You climb the ladder by divorce. Hmm. Wealth building by divorce. You wouldn't have literally 75% of what you have if it wasn't for the divorce. Admit it. You've worked it. I've dated you. I know. I'm not sleeping in your bed anymore. Those days are over with. I don't want to be in the bed, your bed, that other men have been in. I don't want to be on the sheets that other men have spilled their seed on. I don't want to be with a woman who's like a train tunnel. Not interested in that. And where everything has been explored. That's tough. That's tough. But you created those conditions. And I know I contributed to it in my younger years. I know that. So I am partly to blame. I don't speak from a point of being better than you. Why don't we all change? Number one, if you're going to invite a man in your life, get a new bed, get new sheets, maybe even a new house or apartment. We don't want the ghosts of the past. I am not going into your bedroom, which looks like a crime scene, if I put a black light up. Sorry. I will not lay on a bed that other men have laid on, sweat on, tied you up on, ragdolled you, not interested in that. You can do all the laundry you want, but you will get rid of those sheets. <laughs> and with that, finish your coffee and I'll see you tomorrow on the Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason.